to the Piston Fanatic. I'm your host, Dave Dalton, and I'm excited to share my passion and perspective of our Detroit Pistons as we go on this fantastic voyage together. I've been a diehard Piston fan since the days of Dave Bing and Bob Lanier. Well, thank you very much for listening tonight. Please subscribe and like. Tonight, Piston fans, was a tough one to watch. We lost to the um, Spurs 130 to 108. It was uh, 51 to 63 at halftime. We weren't down that much, and then we just got blown away in the third quarter, and they just poured it on, but it was a very mediocre performance by the Pistons, and you know they played back-to-back, -back and the Spurs had two days of rest, but that's not an excuse, and we just got back from a long road trip, and those things all factor in, but our team was lifeless out there, it seemed like, and it was hard to watch, but we did get to watch Victor Weminyama, and he put on a show for us, his first game at Little Caesars, and he had his first triple-double we got to witness, and he only played 21 minutes, and he still got a triple-double. He had, was 6 for 16, and he was 0 for 4 on threes, 4 for 5 on free throws. He had 12 rebounds and 10 assists. But, you know, he, he blocked a bunch of shots. But he, people don't shoot shots, or they miss shots that he does, doesn't block just because they're afraid of him blocking their shots. So he affects a lot of things. But the, the coolest thing for me was watching his passing. He made some passes tonight. He, you know, uh, made this pass right through Bogey's legs to a cutting – teammate he made a behind the back pass in transition it was really cool and the, maybe the best pass was he threw the ball a baseball pass the length of the court to a teammate that was on a full sprint and he hit him right in the hands perfect pass so he was very impressive in it but here's my question here's my question what would the Pistons be right now what would our record be this season if Victor were on our team, if we would have got the lucky ping pong balls, we had the worst record in the league and we, you know, we got the fifth pick. So I just, just be curious to what, see what you guys think our record might be with Cade and Victor and, you know, and, and Duran and Ivy. It, it makes a big difference. And again, our defense has just been atrocious. We've given up 130 points almost every game and for a long time now, like since the end of December. And, uh, you know, I know we, we had that great defensive coach, and he was here for the first four or five games, and then he left for personal reasons. Was it because he can't get along with Monty? Was it because there's an illness in the family? We don't know, and nobody ever tells us. So still, we hired a new assistant coach, and you know he's supposed to be helping with player development and stuff, so we'll see how that goes. But um, we couldn't grab the ball. The Pistons couldn't even grab the ball. Or we'd have two guys go after the ball, and then we'd knock it out of bounds. Or we couldn't get an offensive rebound. It would just, like, go right through our hands and bounce over to one of the Spurs fans, but hands, but I, I still really question, you know, the Spurs have won only five games up until tonight. Now they've won six, but they had the second worst record in the league. And it seems like with Victor and they have some other good players that they would do better than that. It just, you know, they got Popovich, but I, I still, still think that, you know, it's just like Belichick. Belichick's not, you know, he's was considered the greatest coach of all time, but he, um, has not had a good year, and they're talking about maybe he will leave the Patriots. But anyway, let's talk about who you want for the Pistons to be their coach. And I'm going to tell you a guy I wouldn't mind being our coach right now is Darko Rajakovic. And he is the uh, coach for the Toronto Raptors. And so last night, they're playing the Lakers, and they get beat 32, 132 to 131. And they got out shot from the free throw line. The, the Lakers were uh, 28 for 36. And the Raptors were 8 for 13. And in the fourth quarter, the Lakers shot 23 free throws. And the Raptors shot two. And Darko came out blazing, man. This coach in the press conference, he's going to get fined some big bucks. But I want to see our coach get outraged. I want to see our coach show that he's got some fight. And, you know, that's lacking from our team. And that's lacking from our coach. And he said they're, they're not focused. Well, whose job is it to get them focused? But anyway, he... he um, he said, this is outrageous what happened tonight. It's BS. It was a shame for the league, and it was a shame for everybody that this was allowed to happen. And he goes on, you know, and this is, this, this, there's something really here I, I found fascinating. He says, how is it possible that Scotty Barnes, who is an all-star caliber player in this league, he goes every single time to the rim with force and tries to get to the rim without flopping, not trying to get fouls, not trying to get calls. He gets two free throws the whole game. Who does that sound like? It sounds like Cade Cunningham. All year, Cade's been taking the ball to the basket. He doesn't flop, so he doesn't get the calls. So we feel bad, you know, because it's our guy, but it's happening to other people too. And because 
you know, they're only third year in the league. I don't know if that has something to do with it, but it sounds just like Cade. So, you know, Cade's started to get some fouls here later in the season. He's been getting more, and it makes a huge difference. So if you look at Cade's 10 best games this year, he's had seven or more free throws. And his 10 worst games this year, he's averaged less than two free throws. So he's got the ball in his hands all the time. He's driving and passing, and it sounds like Scotty's doing the same thing, and they don't get calls. He says, he's, Darko says, how is it possible? How are you going to explain that to me? And he, he talks in a deep accent. But you, you need to watch this on YouTube. You've got to go to YouTube and watch it. The Raptors coach, you, you, it'll pop up right away. Was it that the Lakers had to win tonight? If that's the case, just let us know, and we don't show up for the game. Just give a just give them the win, and he, again he was really animated. He said that that was not fair tonight, and this is not not happening the first time for us. So it's been happening all all year. He feels touched, just like it's happened to the Pistons, and they're not as bad a team as the Pistons. He says Scotty Barnes is going to be an All Star. He is going to be the face of the league, and what's over the, here during the whole season is a, is complete crap. What's happening over here? He said, and that's kind of what I feel. But I just I just would like our coach. You know, I talked about it against, um, at Utah, no, against the Nuggets, that we got these insane calls, and Monty doesn't even show outrage. He doesn't, he needs to get a technical. I mean, I, I know, I, you know, it's not like you can do it every night, and it, it doesn't change the referees that much, but you just got to show your team that you're fighting for them and that you care, and it just doesn't appear that way. And again, Monty, we don't have a good roster, and we don't have enough wings. We don't have enough shooters. We've had terrible luck with injuries. And you, you don't want to hear that, but now Cade's hurt, Stu's hurt. And Stu has the best off and on um, number on our team. It's like 12.8 and Cade's got the second highest and they're both out. And the guy with the worst on off number is Isaiah Livers. Does that shock you? And he starts, he starts for our Detroit Pistons, but Monty hasn't been given the best roster. He's had a whole bunch of injuries to deal with. But having said all that, he's done a terrible job evaluating our talent and who he puts on the floor. And it appears that he, just like in, in Phoenix, that he has some players that he likes and some players that he doesn't like. And it seems like right away he loves uh, Livers and Killian and Stu. And that he doesn't like Ivy. And now I, you got the Cesar thing is a real thing. And so I got tickets to the game Friday so I could go watch Cesar play against the men. And he... He, he, he got to play 15 minutes, but he really, he got to play the last three minutes because it was a blowout. So this has been happening. He, he wouldn't have even got 15 minutes, but he is not getting to play. And now Cade's not going to be able to play. So I'm going to drive and there's supposed to be a storm, you know, over four hours and watch no Cade and not get to watch Asar play because coach doesn't play him. And here's, here's the thing about Asar. So I, what I don't get is he started, Monty started him. And he, he did, as a starter, he uh, averaged 11 points, 8.5 rebounds, shot 48% in 29 minutes. Those are good numbers. And he's not even counting his other stats were way high. His steals and blocks, and I don't have those, but his steals and blocks were among the league's best, even though he played only 29 minutes. As a, Once he started not subbing, so about the second half of the year, he's as a reserve, he's averaging 3.7 points. Three and a half rebounds. He's shooting 33% and playing 15 minutes. And, you know, he doesn't have any confidence. You can tell that. He he never gets to get in rhythm. He plays like six minutes here, six minutes there, and whatever. And but he thought he played he he thought he was good enough to start. And I know he said we got some other players back, but the other players we got back was Isaiah Livers and guys that are aren't good. And so, you know, and then Knox is playing ahead of them. And he just needs to play. And so that's the other thing. So Monty does this five bench sub. We don't have any good subs. Our, our bench is atrocious, but still we sub five for five instead of um, staggering our starters and having some in and some out, you know, and, and still. So that that's not good. As, and, then, and then again, his, you know, player development. Everybody's getting worse on this team. We're losing our players. Don't have trade value. Their their trade value has all gone down. I think Boyan's has gone up recently. He's played great. I think it is heartbreaking for me. He deserves to get traded. He deserves to play on a good team. So we'll we'll see that what happened there. But the Pistons just couldn't even grab the ball tonight. The ball would 
go in and out of their hands or two guys on our team would go after a rebound and then it would tip to them and we just we just couldn't come up with the ball so it was really hard to swallow but um, uh, we're just going to talk about um, the stats for the game and see what happened. The Livers played 17 minutes. So he is playing Livers less minutes. So I give him credit for that. But Livers was two for three on threes. He only shot three shots. And he had six points, four rebounds. And there was a play in this game. I don't know if you were watching. He catches the ball. Jaden Ivey is in the corner behind the three-point line, wide open. There is nobody... Nobody within 20 feet of him. Seriously, the closest guy is inside the paint. The closest guy to him is inside the paint, and he's behind the three-point line. So Livers looks right at him, fakes a pass to him, and throws it to Killian. And I mean, that I, I just I don't get that, man. I, I, I would love to know what goes on in his head there. But anyway, like I said, Bogey was so impressive again tonight. 33 minutes, 8 for 13. We should have shot more, three for five, and our three-point percentage wasn't good, and it would have been atrocious if he wouldn't have made three for five. He had two rebounds, two assists, but he did have four turnovers, which he is, again, he's in the last month or so, he's turned over too much. 19 points, so let him go to somebody that's, let him go to a contender with, and play with some good players and get us some assets. Duran played 30 minutes tonight, and <laughs> Duran and I, I know Monty coming on the press conference said we're always trying to encourage him to do more and to take more chances. And now, so now he's dribbling down and shooting pull-up jumpers from outside the free throw line, and he, he he was good still. He was 10 for 16, but most of his outside shots he missed. But I think what Monty wanted him to do is make more of his post moves. But uh, playing against Victor, that's still a good game. He was one for one on free throws, 12 rebounds, awesome job, two assists, 21 points. And he had the second best plus minus. He was minus seven. And he threw a behind the back pass. He came down and threw a beautiful bite behind the back pass to Ivy. So that was really cool. So Ivy's struggling, but he was he was seven, played 30 minutes, seven for 18. So he's getting his chances. And so we can't, you know, it's always, I've been blaming Monty for his failures because he, he's, his lack of confidence. But the truth is when Monty was jerking him around worse, he was shooting better. So his form has changed. His form is not what it was. He is not extending his arm and holding his follow through high. He needs to be smart enough to look at how he was shooting, remember how he was shooting at the beginning of this year and at the end of last year and replicate that because it's not the same. I promise you, it's not the same. I I would love to be able to talk to him. Maybe Friday night I'll get to say something to him, but I doubt it. But I'm going to try to get down there early and see what happens. But I still want him to handle the ball more. He's, we still got the ball in Killian's hands constantly. And... You know, Killian had a good game tonight, assist-wise, but he doesn't. Even, he'll dribble right into the middle of the key, and nobody will be around him, and he'll still look to pass. So he's just always looking to pass the ball. He's always looking to look, make the safe, careful pass. And so, when you have the ball in your hands and you play 32 minutes like Killian, you're you're going to get a lot of assists. I guess the Pistons have to make shots though. But so anyway, uh, Jaden Ivy had um, he was three for five by free throws, three rebounds, five assists, and only one turnover. But he had two steals and two blocks. And so they call those stocks. If steals and blocks combine their stocks. So he had four stocks, which is really high, especially for a guard. And he was minus four. So he had the best plus minus on the team, even though he didn't shoot particularly efficient. He had 19 points. So Killian, 32 minutes, two for eight. Zero for zero on threes. No free throws because he's afraid to get fouled. Four rebounds, 12 assists, which is very impressive with only one turnover. But he was minus 11. But we, you can't have a starter out there that's playing 32 minutes and only scoring four points. And we have that all the time, you know, when we start, even when Livers was playing a lot more minutes and he was still only getting like four points. And then even Stu would be like three for seven and have eight points and play 30 some minutes. And so you can't have that many non-scorers out there all the time. Asar. Got 15 minutes, he was 1 for 5, but he was 0 for 3 on 3s. And so I said this before, it's my opinion. Maybe it'll make you think you have no confidence in him, but tell him not to shoot the 3. Tell him just to drive, drive and pass, you know, and when you're struggling as much as he is. So he was 1 for 1 on free throws, 6 rebounds in only 15 minutes, 1 assist and 1 block. So let him play 35 minutes. Let him play and let these guys develop. Let the young guys, that, that's all we got to live for right now is to see Asar and Ivy and Duran um, 
develop. And like I said, Ivy needs to get a shot straightened out, but Duran's doing some impressive things. But the rest of our roster, besides Bogey, is looking not good, and it's hard to watch. But Joe Harris got to play six minutes. He didn't do anything, but doesn't he look like a guy that's playing at the YMCA League when I was older? Some guy that comes out there and can knock down shots. You know, he was really good last game, knocking down shots. Kevin Knox played 24 minutes, 5 for 11, 2 for 5 on threes, 4 rebounds, 12 points. He was minus 17. Wiseman, 17 minutes, 1 for 1 shooting, and he didn't have it tonight especially, but he had a block or two, and he had three points. Burks had another off night. He's been hot, hotter than firecracker lately. He was 20 minutes, 5 for 13, 1 for 5 on threes, and he always gets fouled, 4 for 4 on free throws, 2 rebounds, 2 assists, 15 points. Sasser, so here's the big thing, and I got a lot of my listeners love Sasser. I don't mind Sasser, and again, if you're ever going to find out about Sasser, let him play 25 minutes, you know? What do we got to lose? He played 16 minutes. He was 3 for 7, 1, 0 for 1 on, but you know, he, he scored more points than Killian. <laughs> you know, Killian had 4 and Sasser had 6. He had 5 assists in only 16 minutes. So, let him start. What do we, again, let him and Sass, him and, um, him and Asar play, and, you know, he's a good three-point shooter. He's, a, you know, we want spacing. Well, Sasser's a lot better shooter than Killian, so he can make the three. So, um, I said Wimby had the triple-double, and it was fun to get to watch him. And a couple of things, side, little side notes before we close is um, some people ask, talk about trading for Andrew Wiggins. Uh, the Pacer, the the Warriors are desperate there, and, and Wiggins is struggling, and he's got – a pretty big contract. He actually signed for less than what I thought he could have. Coming off two years ago, when the Warriors won the championship, he was their second best player in the NBA Finals. And he, then last year, he something happened to his dad, I think. he got His dad got a serious illness, and so he missed a whole bunch of the season. And so it would be a huge gamble to trade for him, but he is a 6'7 wing that can, is a great defender when he wants to be, and he can score and he for his career he's shooting 35 percent on threes and he averaged almost almost 19 points a game for his career and he was the number one pick you know in the draft quite a few years ago he's played quite a long time but he's still only like 28 so i guess you could roll the dice there if you thought that was the best trade to um trade bogey because they they need some shooting and stuff so but it's funny watching the nba things happen for teams but not for us so the Grizzlies, they lose John Morant for the rest of the season, tore his shoulder up, and then uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. doesn't play last night, and then they go into Dallas, and they beat Dallas soundly, and they don't have any of those guys, and Dallas has Kyrie and Luka, so that's always interesting. Kawhi Leonard signed an extension, and it looks like Paul George will probably sign one too. They make uh, their owner is the richest owner Steve Ballmer, and they build a new arena, so they need to have good players to try to get seats, people in the seats. So it will be interesting to see how that all goes and turns out. But anyway, the Pistons, I hope Cade gets back sooner than later. Don't rush him back, but if he's healthy, hopefully he can come back and play against the Wizards on Monday. And again, it's, it's a struggle to watch the game tonight and I get like I said I, the, the, my joy is watching Ivy and Duran play and Asar the few minutes he gets to play but we got a lot of chances to do things we got there's trades to be made free agents to sign and a, the NBA draft coming up so hopefully things will get better and anyway I appreciate you listening please subscribe and like be the reason that somebody feels listened to and heard and go Pistons